reason they put me in charge of the Young Entrepreneurs Academy is because I'm secretly 12 years old. All right. <laughs> so I like to do interactive presentations. Don't be shy. Um, I don't think that you're here to get a lecture. You're here to interact. And there's two major things that I want to talk to you about today. One is what we do with our young entrepreneurs and their businesses. And the other one is the actual model of the Young Entrepreneurs Academy itself. So I'm going to start with that. Um, because it's both a challenge and an absolute opportunity. Chip is going to help me. Oh. Yeah, actually, I'm going to need you up here okay. because this is not advancing on its own, and I don't really like to do the whole look at the PowerPoint slide thing. So just keep flipping through there, OK? okay. It's good. Chip Lucas is part of uh, the Career Technical Education Group at, what, what's your actual title? Uh, Executive Director of Career and Technical Education. There we go. That's scary. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Um, Cumberland County Schools, Methodist University, and the Fayetteville Regional Chamber all came together and decided that we were going to start one of these chapters. Now, you are at a Kauffman Funds event. Kauffman Funds also sponsored the Young Entrepreneurs Academy, and it's genius, okay? Because who could say no to this? It is a chapter franchise for an academy that starts youth businesses, and they did a pretty intense well thought out job in terms of launching this kind of program. It covers everything from starting a business plan, a fully fledged business plan, three different instructors. To, I guess anyone here familiar with the career craftsman philosophy? No? All right, you're going to have to Google that. That's your first homework. So you can text that, write that down, whatever you need to do. With our big ideas instructor, basically the kids get an idea of what they can do in the next six months to actually launch a business. So we've got a couple of kids who come in, they're like, I'm going to be the next Bill Gates. I'm going to code an app. And we're like, OK, great. Do you know how to code? And they're like, no. Nope. And we're like, yeah, you can't do that. Don't mean to pop your dreams there, but within this time frame, you are going to launch a business. You are going to launch a business. So you need to take what new skills you have right now, figure out what you want to do, put that together in six months, and, and launch. So we have a big ideas instructor who helps them come up with that business idea. <laughs> We have a business plan instructor, and then we have a launch instructor. The launch instructor is an actual entrepreneur. Um, our instructor, keep, just keep hitting that button there. We're just going to go through here. You guys are all familiar with these concepts, so I just like to have PowerPoint running in the background so you have something else to look at besides me eventually hitting my head self on something around here because I'm a klutz. Um, the, uh, Ashley Thompson from Press Branding downtown. She's an entrepreneur. She taught our business launch. Uh, Donna Keene from Career and Technical Education, she's a business instructor uh, with Cumberland County Schools. She taught our business plan. And then we had amazing, amazing response from the community in terms of getting the funding, startup capital. Because this program actually comes with a $6,000 pot of money that the kids compete for. Wouldn't you like to write a business plan, even like a small business plan, and have access to $6,000? Right? That's not too shabby. Um, generally speaking, the kids are not entitled to anything. They could get one dollar of that pot. They could get all six thousand. Usually, it's somewhere in between. TJ was one of TJ Haney was one of our business mentors. We rely on speakers, uh, presenters, mentors to round out the students' experience as they write their business plans. Then they present them in front of the investor panel uh, for the six thousand dollar pot, um, and then they have a kind of a coming out, if you will, at a trade show where they present their fully launched businesses. They file for EINs. They file DBAs. These are real, legitimate, tax-paying, honest-to-God, legal entity businesses in six months. It's pretty intense. In fact, to be honest with you, myself, the other instructors, if we had written this curriculum, it wouldn't have been as aggressive. Because we've got 12-year-olds who are writing business plans, and we're shaking them, being like, you have to finish your business plan. How many of you have finished a business plan in six months? Were you drinking heavily at the time? Very. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this tool's one, right? Yeah, she was like, yes, absolutely. They don't have that option. So, you know, we were kind of like, well, we know you've got finals, and we know you've got bands, and then we talk to the Yay HQ on the phone every week, and they're like, kids must work harder. They must go. We're like, okay, okay, we'll do it, but we don't, ah. Anyway, we don't do it for thanks, we do it because this is honestly one incredible way for us to start new business, grassroots business, and business that would, if they launched here, stay here. 
What are our challenges in terms of that? We have amazing partnerships. But we don't have self-sustaining sponsorships yet. Um, we need to raise the $6,000 for the investment fund. We need to raise scholarships. There's a, we have had some wonderful response from the community the past two weeks for scholarships for our kids. Right now we have nine kids that we want to accept. All of them are asking for a full scholarship. The program costs $395 for us to run per student. The kids that we have right now are not able to pay that amount. We negotiated with um, doing a buy-in. They're all going to provide $5 a month. The idea is that they have skin in the game, but beyond that, that they are able to know that they can raise that money. Is it $30 for the year? Is it $120 for the year? Whatever their buy-in amount is, they need to have faith that they can raise it, that they can work for it, that they can get it done. And that goes into whether it's we're asking for $100 or we're asking for a million dollars. That's part of the confidence building. But six months of business launch, that's, that's a heck of a confidence builder. These kids know at the end of this process that they can do it. They can do it for this business. They can do it for any business. So that's our goal. <coughs> but we are not yet self-sustaining. So building stronger partnerships in the community, figuring out how do we make the kids uh, connect back into uh, community processes so they are sustaining something. Right now we have three or four kids from last year's class who are coming back as mentors. That's really big. When you're 16, and you, or you're 12, and you're going to be a business mentor to somebody else because you've already launched a business one? I mean, like, you know, resume, whatever. All right, so that's kind of our problem. Uh, but then, here we have actual businesses. These guys launched, uh, with one exception. Uh, this one did not file his EIN or DBA. Um, on the other hand, he also did present to our investor panel. He was the only one. We also had two other kids who were in this class and then decided to leave. Um, and you want to know why they left? One of them definitely was. One of them was 12. She was not mature enough to fully figure out the process. But that being said, she was carrying straight A's and so was the other kid. And they decided that they needed to focus on their straight A's this year instead of the amount of time that it takes to write the business plan. Damn, you know, uh, overachievers, really. So anyway, but that being said, all these kids presented with one exception, and the one that didn't, he had enough of a foundation that he could have launched his business plan with absolutely no startup capital. So I don't worry about him. Um, he's got a really good concept, and I think that you know he could have used a car. What we were actually going to put in for his business plan expense was a used car, and hope that somebody in the investor world would take pity on him. But aside from that, um, everyone else, MRCs are mini retainer cases. Uh, Mitchell doesn't want you to lose the thousands of dollars that your kid has in their mouth that they have to schlep around. He's going to put it on a carabiner so they could clip it into their backpack. Don't lose that money. Save the product. Very exciting. Esk shoe design. Um, if Esk gets his act together, this was uh, TJ's mentee here, we had a brilliant plan for him to uh, apply to the Innovation Fund NC. Should, can I tell this concept? Broad strokes? Yeah, broad. broad strokes. Imagine you are a female and you really enjoy wearing heels, but you have a 40 block commute. What do you do? Take two different sets of shoes, right? What if a shoe could transform from a flat to a heel? all like that concept. Um, he also had another concept that was more along the lines of what if mood shoes and mood rings and shoes had a love child. Very interesting. So uh, never forgotten, very interesting business model. Having a 16 year old explain this to you is also quite interesting. Never forgotten has noticed that more and more, particularly unfortunately in the area of deaths in high school, um, people want to memorialize kids or lost family members through things like t-shirts. So he's taken a very generic concept, which is t-shirt printing, and moved it into the realm of uh, funeral services, memorial services. We, uh, so it, it's not something that one would think about very much in terms of, you know, we, we 
very much on the line in terms of being very respectful of people's grief process, but at the same time offering a product that people are looking for in order to help process their grief. Um, couple, oh, I made a mistake in my PowerPoint. Anyway, uh, we had a fashion designer. Studio Hexagon uh, was our semifinalist. She won $1,800 from our investors. She got a free plane ticket, her and her parents, to go down to Florida to present to the regional, sem the Southern Regional Semifinals for the Saunders Scholarship. Saunders Scholarship is a full scholarship to uh, RIT, full scholarship. She's 12. She's 12 and had the opportunity to win a, a complete full ride scholarship to college. And the thing with, we've talked to all of our kids about, we have three who matriculated, one of whom ended up at uh, Methodist in the Center for Entrepreneurship, that the skills that they learn in this business process have direct applications everywhere else in life. So if she had won her scholarship and didn't want to go to RIT, we would have started talking about how do you negotiate for a college scholarship using leverage. I've got a free one to RIT. I really want to go to George Washington University. How do we make that happen? We've gotten a lot of different life lessons from this program, but the one that I've personally gotten a lot of is this is possible, totally possible. That a 12 year old can write a business plan, launch a business, and start looking for real estate, which is what she's doing right now. Um, her plan was to have basically a one-stop center for after-school activities for kids of different age ranges in multi a multitude of different sports or activities. So instead of dropping your kid off at soccer and your kid off at gymnastics, um, and then having to go to the store to pick up the soccer cleats and then going to another store to pick up the gymnastics outfits, you would basically have a gymnastics, ballet, you know, um, I guess soccer's not a good one, but a karate studio with a store that offers all the products that you need for those activities in one location. Parents, you're welcome. <laughs> Our kids are doing great. They're, you know, uh, we had two of them who called me and were like, hey, I want to come back for this year's class. And we were like, can you do that? And HQ was like, no. <laughs> Once you go through this, you really have the skills. You don't need to go through it again. But so they're learning to stand on their own two feet. And it's just like graduating from college. It's a little scary out there. You know, you're like, hey, I had this mentorship. I had this support. What do I do now? But they've got their guides. They've got their books. They've got us as continuing mentors. Some of these kids are still in continuing education classes. They're getting more business development skills. Some of them realized that they needed web development skills or to understand marketing or social media. Some of them needed shop. <laughs> Some of them needed uh, additional mentors or to partner with scientists who could do the actual um, making while they did the business development. They've learned a lot through this process and they're still going. What Ye tells you, Young Entrepreneurs Academy is Ye. I come from upstate New York, so I say, yeah, that's wrong, it's Ye. Um, Ye says that it doesn't matter whether these businesses survive or not. Some of the Ye businesses have gone on to launch, some of them have publicly traded, some of them are, uh, they won the MIT Startup Lab competition. Right now, these kids have fully functional businesses, and some of them will continue, others will not. But whether these become, these guys become serial entrepreneurs or, you know, one shot, stick with it, they've got all the skills that they need to be business owners right now. And we do from 6th to 12th grade. That's our program. So, that's us. That's the Young Entrepreneurs. Questions? Yeah? Is there a defined cap in the number of folks you have in the academy? 12 we, uh, we max out at 24 kids. Right now my class is not full. Right now we have nine. Um, and I'm not even sure we're going to get all nine because I'm having trouble reaching one of them. Um, I would really like to get 15 if you know of any. I'll start building them in. But I've got applications over there. Yep. How do they select? All right. They write us little essays. And then they sit down with us for an interview. We do 10 minute interviews. Do you want to weigh in? We uh, have them come to the chamber. Marty, Hannah, and I interview them on some questions based on a rubric from the YA um, headquarters. And, um, and they have some great um, communication skills. They have some, some great knowledge of, uh, of what they want to do as their uh, business plan. And uh, they've done a good job. So how do they, how do they set up the uh, interview and ask 
say? I mean, do they just write that? They write that in advance and they turn that into the chamber the office. Um, we screen the applicants, um, read them, and then bring them in for the 10 minute interviews. So, okay. We are starting next week, but I'll tell you that the first couple of weeks of the business of the great big idea, a lot of it is brainstorming and a lot of it is kind of foundational knowledge. So if we had a couple of kids start late, they would be able to catch up very easily. Um, yeah. How long does it last, the crisis? It goes um, until uh, the end of April, very beginning of May. And then um, you start, yeah. is it every semester long? It's every Tuesday for two hours, from 5 to 8 p.m., so it's an after school <coughs> at Methodist University. Um, we do a couple of field trips, but basically we follow the Cumberland County School schedule. So if Cumberland County School is off, we don't have class. So is it a nine-month program? Um, it's 30 weeks. It's, it's three 10-week segments, as you mentioned earlier. There's three instructors, and it's for, uh, it's approximately 30 weeks. Each instructor teaches 10 weeks. And the kids do do work outside of class, so we, we sometimes struggle with that. But what they're doing outside of class is research on their business plans. Um, and we have decided to set up some additional study help for them to do that this year. Um, what else was I going to say? Yes. Um, the business you just listed up there, are they, when you say fully functional, are they, they profitable or are they profitable? How do you, how do you um, evaluate, you know, that, it being fully functional or success, I guess? That's an excellent question. Um, I mean, most of what I was talking about is in terms of their, um, Let's see, hardly any of them are profitable right now. Um, what most of them are in is in either a design phase or a product development phase um, for our product-based businesses. Um, for Studio Hexagon, once she gets space, she's been working at a Village Christian Academy doing an after-school modeling training program. So once she gets physical space, what she'll start doing is recruiting instructors and setting up her um, cash in cash. <coughs> But um, in terms of functional, they have bank accounts, they have EIN numbers, they have DBAs. If you wanted to pay them for their services, they could receive your cash under their, their business name. And wasn't that a trip and a half, okay? We had the 12-year-old going to PNC Bank <coughs> saying, I would like to open a business account. They're like, you are not, we can't sue you, we can't give you a business account. So <laughs> she ended up with a student account, well, you know, like, if you can't sign a legal document, it's a little difficult, right? Um, that is a small problem with this program. So uh, they opened a student account with one of her parents as a co-signer, which seems to work, and it's just for her business. In terms of profitability, um, two, of the two of these are working through patent processes. So once they have their patents established or have worked out their formula, one of whom is looking at um, mass manufacturing, he's the fashion designer, so he's Anyway, we've got a couple that are, they're not yet profitable. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. I could go on and on and on. But they're not yet profitable, but they are launching. Yes. You first, and then you go. Okay, yeah, you, okay. you, you, you said that, that um, some of them are applying for patents. That whole process can be expensive. Mm -hmm. That is I know, true. I've looked into it. You know, yeah, for a U.S. patent, it's about $10,000. For European, it's about 15, and for U.S., European, and Chinese, it's close to $20,000. Right. How do they uh, how do they swing that? Mm -hmm. They are going to have to start their fundraising or capitalization. So we've given them foundation between the $1,800, the $400. That's the range in which they won from the um, from the investor panel. Um, some of whom, some of them are. I mean, it comes down to basic entrepreneurship, family, fools, and friends, right? Um, a couple of them are going to be incubating. Some of them are working other jobs in order to pay for their processes. Gregory II actually came to us with a with a trademark process already in motion when he started our class. Um, but that's a really good question because a lot of them can be very um, particular. But part of the half the battle is the research. Um, William Evans wanted to do. Um, a hamper, like a laundry hamper that looks like a basketball hoop. He did a lot of research. There's actually not a patent on that particular design. 
There are a couple different designs, but not the one that he wants to create. So we talked about very specific patent language. We had the, the library come in and talk to us. So once he is able to figure out how much it costs for him to file that, and he's doing that research now, he's going to have to figure out how to pay for it. Same boat as everyone else in terms of entrepreneurship. Once you stated earlier that they could not go back and retake a class with you guys, but do you, <clears throat> are they still able to get information? Yes. And, and myself, with them? Well, and the other part of it, that Lexi Hasapis is our big ideas instructor from C. So we try to uh, connect them with the resources in the community that they could use for startup businesses. Um, so SEED is one of them, and um, the Small Business Development Center is another one. Um, we are making sure that they understand that there are resources available to help them. They can't come back to the class. They've already been there and done that. So, so they are mentors. They can call me. They can call Lexi. They can call Don Keene. Yeah. So you don't tell them you, you're finished, get out of our lives? stay with them through their life. We tell them, here's my cell phone number, call me anytime. If you text me at 4 in the morning, it's not an emergency. I will kill you, but I will also pick you up if you need to. Yes, right here. Hi. Um, do you all educate them on the aspects of foreign trade suppliers? We actually I have to use a lot of foreign suppliers. That's, <laughs> That's what I teach my children. It is uh, something that we touch on. Um, we actually had someone come in and speak to us who is a, um, he's actually an active duty soldier. He has, he runs a company with his uh, father where they do uh, recycled paper um, remanufacture um, in partnership with a Chinese company. Mm -hmm. And he was able to talk to them about his profit margins, how they work a import-export business, uh, what it looks like to work with a foreign uh, manufacturing facility. Um, my personal pet peeve is the vast amount of Chinese manufacturing that we import into this country, so I do give them a buy American, use American, be American spiel, mm -hmm. but um, William staunchly resisted my efforts and I think is currently investigating Chinese manufacturing companies. <laughs> Another um, question. Yes, please. Do you all give them the aspects of the importance of cultural diversity? Because you, you in, in entrepreneurship, once you become worldwide, you're going to need international suppliers. And these children here in this country, cultural diversity is a big thing because when they try to go abroad, if they've never been taught cultural diversity, there is no way they're going to be able to go into India or China or Korea, deal with these manufacturers and respect their culture and not offend them to do business with them. Build a respectful, and yes. Yes, we build lack a that. business relationship. <laughs> yes. I don't, we haven't gone in depth into that. We do deal with work readiness. Mm -hmm. So we talk a lot about perception and we talk a lot about how they um, carry themselves and how they deal with other people. Um, everything from the basics of how you dress for a job interview to, you know, how do you greet people and talk to people who you are pitching um, and how do you talk to people who you have responsibility to produce something for, um, but we haven't we haven't touched that deeply into it. Um, William was the only one that was really specific on manufacturing and mass manufacturing. Gregory wanted to do a clothing line, but we were trying to steer him towards either a North Carolina clothing manufacturer or a model similar to American Apparel in California. Ultimately, it's going to be up to him, and I don't think he's really made a connection yet. Ran into a stumbling block about capacity. You know, how do you raise the money to do the first run in order to sell the first run in order to have a contract for the second run, the third one, the fourth run when you don't have the first run in order to sell the product and you guys yeah. all know the catch 22 that results from chicken that. and the egg. Right, and he didn't need 10,000 of a particular item. He was looking to do smaller scale, but he doesn't sew. So, how do you do a template without the sewing skills if you? We had some interesting stuff with that. Um, so a lot of them are still figuring it out. But they've got a really good head start. The other thing that all of our speakers um, and mentors commit to is being that resource. So we bring in lawyers and accountants and bookkeepers and 
web developers and marketers, and our kids can call them at any time and be like, you know, we're, it's not free lawyering, right? But hey, I've got a quick question. I'm thinking about filling out a patent copyright. What do I need? Who do I need to go to? How much is it going to cost me? You know, and that they get for free. Other questions I can answer? Thoughts? Y'all know 18, 12 to 18 year olds who want to be part of this program? Yes? Yes? Yes. Hi. We have a lot of fun. Yes. Um, I know you said money was one of your is one of your challenges. What's another challenge you possibly have faced? I mean, it's just mostly maturity on the part of the students. Um, we don't want to create a reality for them that is too pressure-filled, too scary. At the same time, we are really we're laying down the hammer. You know, between point A and point B is a fully fledged business plan, and at point B, you're going to be standing up in front of a group of people who've got six thousand dollars to give to you or not to give to you. And it's like starting off with an A average, right? You can only lose it. That's a fairly intimidating situation for a lot of people. So uh, we, we work with them to develop the understanding that if they don't get what they need, they still have the resources to problem solve to get where they need to go. Um, but a lot of times it's just overcoming the, well, I'm 12, you know, I'm just gonna do this because it's like school. We talk to them about this is not school. You know, they're responsible for their own learning in this process. This is real world. This is real world. They don't come in and yeah. sit down immediately. They interact with us as adults. Yeah, plus I imagine it's a huge uh, hurdle, the credibility issue. I mean, you're a 14-year-old talking before seasoned investors, and, you know, they're kind of looking at you as a snot-nosed kid. So how you present yourself is, has got to be, uh, has got to be very important. Mm -hmm. We actually, um, Vinny Venturello was one of our investors representing the chamber, and uh, and he actually, so they the, the investors only allowed three questions. So uh, in the middle of this investor assessment, he jumps up and he goes, I have a question, but it shouldn't be counted as one of our questions. We're all kind of like looking at him like, what? And he goes, are you really 12? <laughs> to the kid who just presented, right? She's terrified, because this guy just like was like, hey, I've got a question. And, you know, but it was very funny. I thought it was funny. She probably painted them. <laughs> Which is fine. <laughs> well, last question. What can the community do for you? We are looking still for some mentors. We are looking for people to engage. Um, I can guarantee you that if you are an entrepreneur, you have something that you can offer to our students if you can trade in time. If you have some dollars that you are looking to sponsor in our community, we are looking for self-sustainability. So even though we need the same amount of money every year that we go through this program, we are ultimately going to have small student businesses that are feeding back into this process that are profitable. Um, and we are really looking to make sure that each class successively achieves more than the class before them. So having students who know that we are here and put their applications in, having parents promote us, having teachers build us into their curriculum, as well as having sponsors who come back year after year who are very interested in staking these student businesses. Very helpful and very important. Um, yes. So when you say stake, are you looking at this as a contribution, a donation, or are you looking at the investor getting an equity interest in whatever it develops? It is a donation. But despite the format being very similar to Shark Tank, we don't actually sell portions of the students' businesses. It would be A, too complicated, and B, way, way too messy. Um, all of our students were supposed to have written thank you notes and a update to their investors this year. I'm not entirely sure that that's happened. we got to work on a couple more things before we can give you an equity interest in their business. That being said, we had a couple ideas here that were very close that I would say very close to being mature, well-rounded, incredibly actionable business plans that could take the next step. Whether the kids were on that same level is yet to be determined. But once we have once we have something for the community, we will be pushing them towards invest, innovation fund NC. We will be pushing them towards real, you know, beyond yay actionable investment in the community. But right now, it is a donation. So you're a 501 C. Uh, we use the uh, either the chamber or the um, I think the community the foundation. Community foundation. Yeah, yes. um, as a 501c. Got to be a 
how do you get more information? I will give you an application and my card. Um, we have a very awesome Facebook page and Twitter. We don't really have a website up and running or anything along those lines right now. Um, we're working on that this year, but you can reach me. Um, I'd be happy to give you the lowdown. I'm also happy to invite you into class to come and either present or just come and see what we're about. You can also find them on our website. Excellent, thank you. And so ours as well. Yes. Career Tech um, Education. Just a one year's operating budget. Uh, if, if that was to, it's know, it's roughly it's roughly twenty thousand, um, but that's give or take. Like and right now, that, that's inclusive of the six thousand. Yes, that's inclusive of the six thousand. Okay. Um, do y'all do anything? Uh, I, I know this is geared toward toward young for, uh, entrepreneurs. Do you do anything for adults as well, like that? We do not. Uh, we do not. Uh, but definitely something to think about with. And, uh, and with build our business center and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, that's our side of the house. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's, well, yeah, like, that's these guys. They would know. People don't talk to you. <laughs> How do we do that? We have programs. We have everything from certificates to um, degrees. So we're getting ready. I'm hoping to get ready to put. We already have business administration degree with some certificates in entrepreneurship. And we have just courses and pieces just interested in a course. Um, I'm getting ready to ask the Board of Trustees if we can start a degree in entrepreneurship here at the college. So I have to have their blessing first to move forward and I'm hoping to get that blessing in November or December. Um, but we, if somebody's just interested in a class, uh, we have classes in entrepreneurship. Um, Dr. Haynes is teaching with innovation and creativity. Um, another organizer, Brian um, Ken, is teaching our Entrepreneurship One. Uh, coming in spring, we have funding for entrepreneurs. Uh, so that people can actually get a credential, a certificate, or, or even go on to a degree. That's my side of the house, Tamara. And we do, um, I'm more the community-based um, small business center. And what we do there is we uh, provide technical assistance for entrepreneurs from how to start a business to how to write a business plan um, to how to fund your business. And we also do the one-on-one -on -one counseling as well. Cindy and I are working together to do some projects where we can start adding seed money to help business owners, adults, be able to, to launch their business as well. Because one thing we did find that one of the big issues with um, people trying to start a business is they don't have the capital to get it started. And then there and is then the, sorry, I was going to go, there was the angel fund as well starting up in this region. Right, um, that is the innovation fund. That's the pre-angel fund, pre innovation fund North Carolina. North Carolina. And, and then we, there is an angel group in the area. Right. And we have Just a rich environment yeah. for entrepreneurs. Um, and we all get along well. Right. When yes. they graduate out of out of Hanna's area, where do they go next? Yeah. If you'd like information on the innovation fund in North Carolina, there's some on the back table. Right, what's the next round? Do you know? We actually are close enough to bring down this year. Okay. Uh, so stay tuned for 2015. Okay. We thank you. We'd like to thank our uh, entrepreneur rock stars.